Good morning. A few announcements. First, see the banner up there? It's Life Sunday, and that we're celebrating that all of life is precious. No matter how old you are, no matter what challenges you face, life is precious, and you specifically, you individually, are precious in God's eyes. Uh, we have a new inquirers class that's begun. Uh, they're meeting in the, the media center, which is the, the new library down in the school, and, uh, and that'll be on Thursdays at 6.30. Uh, you can come through the school doors and then head down to uh, the media center, choirs class, new member class. And then finally, we have Bible study tonight on Zoom, 7 o'clock, and we're starting uh, First Peter. We actually started last week, but we're, we're still at the very beginning at First Peter. Uh, so please come. It's a great book. It's very relevant to what we're facing today. So I'd like to see all of you tonight. Now turn and greet your brothers and your sisters. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves we justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 3. The young man Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, 
and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I'm about to do a thing in Israel at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. And I declare to him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, Here I am. And Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him. And let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by His power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to sing Alleluia.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. We read together. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. We thank you, Father, that we are gathered again. What a joy it is to be your people. For we know that we have a Father who speaks uh, to us in his word. We know that we have a Father who cares enough to, to let us hear him and to speak to him again in our prayers. We pray this day that, Father, you would grant us your spirit as you have promised, that we might hear with the ears of faith, that we might be people who live to the praise of your glory, and that the world around us, which lives in darkness, may see your marvelous light shining in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So often in our world, we live so feeling isolated or lonely. In our day and age, people often feel like the world is out of control, like we don't really belong someplace or any place, and we wonder about what's going on. So did you hear the words of Paul? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. When in our day and age like we have, isn't that a beautiful word to hear? Isn't that comforting to know that we have a God who says we belong to Him? Isn't it wonderful to know that we have been made His children at a great cost to Him and not to us? What a beautiful, comforting words Paul has for us. Comfort in a world in which we feel lonely and isolated comfort of knowing that we belong to Him. We do not go alone, but the God who created all things. He is with us and we with Him, for we belong to Him. What beautiful words. You are not your own. You were bought at a price, for it's comfort in a world that so often feels out of control. We worry about COVID. We worry about raising our children. If the studies are correct, over 90% of parents are worried that their kids are falling behind because of isolation and not being able to go to classes. And yet, here's the good news. We're not alone. We've been bought at a price. We are not our own. Our God is with us even when things seem too big and too out of control and too crazy. What beautiful, comforting words Paul has for us. You were bought with a price. You are not your own. What beautiful words those are and how comforting. For so often we wonder how or even if we belong to people, to others, to anything. So often we have that disjointed feeling in our lives as if things don't fit together. And yet Paul reminds us with these great words, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. See, here's the comfort we have. We are God's people. Here's the joy and the comfort we have. He has rescued us away from the power and the kingdom of Satan and sin. The blood of Christ paid the price that we might be God's people. You were bought with a price. You are not your own. You belong to God. What a great comfort these words are. What beautiful words they are in the time of our need. But then sit back and think for a second. They're also kind of strange words, aren't they? They're not words, perhaps, the way we are normally used to thinking about ourselves. Instead, they seem rather radical. If we actually listen to what those words say and what those words mean, we might find ourselves a little shocked even. I mean, not our own. We are people in America. We have been taught from the time we are the youngest we can imagine that we are our own person. We are our own man or woman or child. That we can dream whatever and we can achieve it because we are our own people and nothing can stand in our way. 
And yet Paul comes to us with this radical thought that we are not our own, that we've been bought with a price, that we belong to God, that we don't belong to ourselves. I mean, somebody makes that claim on us, we start to cry out, how dare anyone stop me? How dare anyone inhibit the, myself, how I think or feel or act? And we struggle with that thought so often. And then we hear the rest of the words, don't we? You were bought with a price. Bought? I mean, it's like it sounds like some kind of human trafficking, doesn't it? It sounds like something, well that we actually do belong to somebody and not ourselves. You see, the words that Paul brings to us seems to, well, at the very least, put us in debt. And at the most, clear, have enslaved us to God. See, the words are radical, aren't they? They call us to look at ourselves and our lives and to realize we do not belong to ourselves. And though we may so often rebel against the thought that we belong truly to someone else and that our bodies and our lives belong to God, well, that just shows the depth of our sin, doesn't it? Perhaps the reason so often in our lives and in our world people feel lonely and out of control, or even if they belong, is because they think they're their own person. And they have isolated themselves in their thoughts and in their lives from everyone else. You are not your own, you were bought at a price. Strange as those words may be in our minds, they are true. It's like Ripley's, right? Strange but true. We have been bought by God because before God came and rescued us, before he bought us away, we were enslaved. We were enslaved to sin. We were enslaved to the power of the devil. We were part of the kingdom, not of God, but a part of the rule of Satan in our lives and in this world. We have been bought by God, rescued from the power of sin and the kingdom of Satan. And make no mistake, the kingdom of Satan is real. And we see its darkness throughout our world we can even at times see it impinge on the corners of our lives. We see it as people rebel and, and reject the Word of God. We see it as people take all things into their own hands. We see it, as Paul talks about, in the sexual immorality of our world where child after child are born without knowing parents. You see, that is the problem. It's the kingdom of Satan. But God has rescued us. Now we belong to him. Enslaved once to Satan, now through the blood of Christ, we belong to God and we are part of his kingdom. We are part of his reign. We were bought at a price. You belong to God, body and soul. You are not your own. We who live by faith belong to God. For he has paid the price of this cross with his son for our forgiveness. Now we belong to God. Whether we like it or not, the truth is this. We are never our own person as much as we might think we are. As much as our world may tell us we are our own person, we are not. We are either people belonging to Satan and dominated by sin, or we are people who belong to God through faith in Christ Jesus. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, Paul says. Do you get what this means? It means our whole lives, and not just an inner person, and not just some kind of spiritual being belong to God. No, God does not settle for those mere thoughts and emotions. What God means is that this body 
at this time, in this world, at this moment, in this place, matters. For it is this body that belongs to God. It is this body that he has rescued. And it is in these bodies that you and I have. For we are body as well as soul. It is in these bodies that we are called to glorify and to serve our God. For you see, God does not live with that dualism that we have. God does not live simply by separating us the way we like to. Like our inner person can be so radically different than how we live and talk and have our lives. No, our God has rescued us body and soul. He has rescued us that we might be his own now and in eternity. That's why the resurrection is important. That's why we look to the day when we rise again. For our bodies have been saved by God that now we may glorify God with these bodies. And one day we will do so perfectly. So we hear the call of God. You are not your own. You are bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Do you hear what that means? It means we've been called from sexual immorality, and we have been called to sexual fidelity to one's heterosexual spouse. It means we have been called from drunkenness and overeating and gluttony to moderation and simply finding joy with our friends. It means we have been called to tame our tongues and to quit gossiping about other people and rather to serve them in the best and kindest way and to speak about them in the kindest ways possible. It means we are called to quit asking, what's in it for me? And we're called now to ask, how can I serve God and my neighbor today, at this moment and in this time? For you see, you are not your own. You have been bought with a price. And when that has come, it means so simply this, that God has made us his own, and we belong to him. What it means is we're no longer dominated by sin. We're no longer called to be dominated by Satan. But we are the people of God belonging to God, enslaved to His grace, that we might finally be free once and for all, not to serve the own whims of our passions, but to serve as God has served us, to love one another. You see the beauty in those comforting words, you are bought at a price, you are not your own? In a world that promotes loneliness, and the feeling of being out of control, and the feeling that we don't belong because it makes each individual the center of all things, God has done something great. He has said, you are not your own. You belong to me. You were bought at a price. There is the grace of God. You are not your own. We are not our own at all. We are God's children his people called out of darkness and into his marvelous light to serve him, to give him praise. With these very bodies in this very world, at this very time, in the midst of the very messes that we find ourselves in, it is these bodies that bring glory to God. For in us, God is at work. And in us, through faith, we know that Christ is seen. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Glorify God in your body. Amen. We rise to confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God found in Christ Jesus and for all according to their needs. Gracious Father, thank you for making us your own, freeing us from the slavery to the enemy. Thank you for rescuing us through the blood of your Son, purchasing us, and by making us own, your own through the work of the Spirit. Teach us always that we are not our own, that we may glorify you with our bodies and serve our neighbors in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask that you would look with compassion upon this congregation and all our Lutheran schools, that you would bless our pastors, our principals, our teachers, our staffs, that the Word of God might be spoken truthfully and boldly, that many more might hear it and believe it and be saved. We pray for all the members of St. John, but especially this week, James and Kristen Krzyzewski, the Krzyzewski family, Rebecca Kuhlman, Erna Kush, and the Kutchman family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask that you would bless our inquirers class and our confirmation classes, that these students would grow in their faith and understanding and may lead godly lives to the praise of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask that you would watch over our nation, especially this week with the inauguration of a new president. Bless all of our elected officials and all the people. We ask that you would guide the affairs of this nation and the world for the good of your church. We ask that you'd also bless our state, our cities and communities, including the city of Detroit. And this week, we are very mindful of the unborn and the elderly and those who have mental and physical challenges. Father, we ask that you would remind us all that life is precious. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, bless the sick. Be with Diane, David, all those on our prayer list and all those we now name in our hearts. Father, be with their doctors and their nurses. Give them strength to face the challenges of the day. And may they ever keep their eyes focused on your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Father, we pray for those who mourn, including the Haggerty and Schroeder families at the death of Jim Haggerty. Comfort us with the promise that because your Son lives, we also shall live. And neither death nor life or anything could separate us from your love found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we gather our offerings.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In Him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with the angels and the archangels and with all the company of heaven, we now laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver us and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, In giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you, body and soul, to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.